fall camp's just uh, about a week away. You know, what's some of the things, like, how's your offseason been going? You know, what are some of the things you've been focusing on to, to kind of get ready for it? Offseason's been going great. Uh, I've really been focused on getting to the playbook and knowing everything, like, the back of my hand, for real. So, at the end of what, one of the spring practices, I was talking to you in a scrum, and you seem really excited about the new tenor of this defense, being really aggressive compared to kind of what the situation was last year. As you guys know more about this defense, you know, what kind of things really jump out to you about what kind of defense that Brian Ward's asking you guys to play? Uh, it's really, it's NFL defense, so I know that's going to help me translate into the league when I do decide to go. But most importantly, it's a defense that lets the linebackers play, see ball, get ball, and also we're in the pass too, so it's really beneficial to everyone around the whole defense. Let's the D linemen eat, let's the DBs cover, and let the linebackers do what they do best and see ball, get ball, and hit. Just the, you know, just the aggression front, just you know, being kind of like allowing you guys to go play football and, and be aggressive, you know, mm -hmm. kind of considering last year's team versus this year's, how, how much, like, how does it feel just like as a defender to kind of, you know, have the kind of the, the ability and the freedom to get after it now? It's undescribable. <laughs> being able to finally be on that field and knowing I'm going to be on that field this year is something that it's, it's like a dream coming true. I've been waiting four years to get on that field and now that's finally here, I'm just, I'm ready to eat, for real. Yeah, you know, it's obviously been a long, long journey, you know, the junior college draft and coming to Arizona State and kind of, you know, putting in the work and then getting to this chance. What are the kind of the lessons that you've learned along the way about just kind of the, the business of, of college football and just kind of, you know, how it's shaped you just having to go through kind of a, a difficult, kind of, you know, uncommon route? Yeah, uh, patience. That's the one thing that I learned is that if you have patience and you grind, put your head down, good things will come to you. So my main thing was just that, you know I mean, even though – you know how good you are. You just gotta stay down, be humble, and when it's your time, you produce and you shine. Now, you know, being a part of the program last year and this year, it seems like a kind of a night and day difference in terms of just the program culture, you know, the yes. guys I've talked to. What things have jumped out to you most, you know, compared to what you experienced last year and like the first seven months of the Dillingham era now so far? Everyone's bought in. That's one thing that I really realized. Everyone's bought in where a team is not a bunch of individuals playing on the field like it was last year. Like, especially during spring ball, I'm out there, I'm communicating with my teammates. They're reciprocating it. It's not just a bunch of people, hey, do this, do that. And when they don't get done, start barking and start like bickering each other. It's more of a team where you can actually, you can critique someone and they'll reciprocate it and they'll understand it and they won't feel defensive about it like how it was last year. What kind of jumps out to you about Kenny Dillingham as a leader of this program and kind of what he's brought to kind of, it seems like really kind of revitalize not just the program, but like the ASU community as a whole. I say the way we practice and the way we prepare. I've never felt more prepared ever playing football. I've been playing football for 15 years now. Like doing the off season kind of like uh, student led or players led or walkthroughs is something that has helped me tremendously because a lot of people can sit in a film room and watch everything and uh, retain it, while a lot of other people need to do those reps, walk through it, be really on the field to understand it. And that's one thing I felt like he helps cater and teaches to different styles of way that people learn. It's, yeah, it's one of the things that it kind of, about in talking to some other players, that they said, like, when he came in, he didn't say, this is how I'm going to do things. He asked you guys, what do you need from me as a coach in order to be successful? What does it mean to have, like, a coach? Taking that approach is kind of like very kind of unconventional in a way. Oh, he's a player's coach for sure. He wants he understands that it's not the program that makes the team. It's the team. It's the people on the team, the players that make the program. So he wants to really cater to that. He wants to tell the, ask the players, hey, what do y'all feel is doing? What y'all feel is right? What do y'all feel is wrong? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? Of course, he has his own plan. He's been in college football for about a decade or so. I'm not really 100 percent sure on that, but he knows what is right, but he also understands that the players also know what can best benefit them. AJ Cooper, your uh, linebacker coach, you know, what are yeah. some of the things about, yeah, it seems like the, you guys are really kind of thinking what he's doing. Mm -hmm. What makes him a special coach that is kind of, you know, and every linebacker I've talked to seems to be really enthusiastic about what he's bringing oh, to the room. Oh, he's probably, he's the best coach I've ever had, hands down. I'm not, you know I mean, I'm not trying to sweet talk or anything like that, but he, te he treats football like he's a teacher and he's in the film room and on the field he engages us he's not the type of kind of coach that plays the politics that only teaches the people he knows who's going to play he teaches everybody in the room he engages everybody and that's the one thing that i love like as a future coach he's one of the he's one of the coaches that i want to role model my uh my coaching style after thousand percent so a uh, future coach then like so when did you like when is, did you decide hey that's the path i want oh, my whole life whole life it's like life. you know you're gonna be coached whenever because your playing days are done if my playing days do end, which I don't, I don't see them ever ending, hopefully, not, not hopefully, undoubtedly, 
But when the time does come, definitely be a coach because I can't imagine my life without football. Why why coaching? Just you just love the sport so much? Or love like it. there's obviously different ways you can be in the game, but like mm -hmm. coaching specifically kind of takes a different mindset and attitude. So like what why why is it that that's the path you want to take? Because I love football so much and I already know I'm accumulate so many knowledge. I feel that it's only right to give back what I've learned and really yeah, all the years that I've been through football, all the skills, teaching that I've accumulated, it's only right to give back. And so it seems like you know, we're talking about Coach Cooper, he's going to, going to be kind of more of that, that teaching coach, mm -hmm. you know, a guy who's just, you know, rather than kind of laying down the water, you want to teach and develop those guys. Exactly. Awesome. Uh, and so, you know, when you look ahead, you know, just about a week away from fall camp, you know, what are some things that, you know, when that month has passed, you, it's, October, it's uh, August 31st opener, what are some things that you have want to accomplish in fall camp to make sure that you know that, that you're ready to go? Uh, I really want to get my mentality down. I want to be able to be in the game, be under control, not just not be out of control in the game. So really just be in practice, be centered, realize, okay, look at down and distance, look at the play call, look what the offense is running, and not just be out there looking at the running back or looking at the offense alignment like, you're next or I'm going to get you or, you know what I mean? Just more of play more logistical than trying to dominate my opponent. What does a successful 2023 look for James Johnson? Successful 2023? All Pac-12 uh, linebacker. All Pac-12 linebacker, and I'd say, uh, yeah, definitely winning the conference. I don't, I don't see anyone in the conference that can stop us. Uh, you have a lot of uh, you know, some talents in that room as long. You know, Trey Brown, the kind of the veteran presence mm -hmm. yourself as well. Newcomer in, in Juju. Yeah. You have Will Schaefer, kind of some young up-and-coming backers. Uh, you know, what, what kind of, what's your evaluation? You know, maybe, Put on that coaching hat, if you will, and you know, like, kind of like break down the strengths of this group of Sun Devil linebackers. I say the strengths as a linebacker group is that we have so much variety and people that can do different things. Like say if we're in uh, second and short, we got run stoppers, or if we're in third and long, we got people who can cover like DBs in our room. So it's really the versatility of our group that is our biggest strength.